Dr. Kelly Gephardt from Happy Tales Veterinary Clinic is here answering your pet related questions. All right, this is something I've never heard of before. Uh, it says, what is good for my bulldog that gets interdigital cysts between the toes and why do they get these things? Right, so as a breed, bulldogs have some coarser hair and little wider feet, which can predispose them as a breed to get interdigital cysts due to inflammation of the little hair follicles. Um, so you wanna make sure to have them checked with your regular vet to make sure that they are interdigital cysts and not something else. They may wanna do some medications to help decrease inflammation, um, antibiotics or steroids, um, and make sure that if it does look like something other than a cyst that they address that appropriately. Um, interdigital cysts can also come from inflammation just from licking or trauma. So following up with your regular vet to talk about a plan that's specific for your pet and what's going on to cause them is what's going to be best there. All right, this person says they have a cat that has allergy spots that look like hot spots. She gets mm -hmm. steroid and antibiotic shots every month, but they keep coming back and they get bigger. Sometimes they're in different areas. Um, could this be more than just an allergic skin reaction? Interesting. It sounds like there may be a recurrent exposure to an underlying allergen, whether that's fleas. Like one flea bite is all it takes to create a systemic um, inflammatory reaction for flea allergies. So it may be that she's getting re-exposed to the allergen that, um, and she may have a secondary underlying bacterial skin infection. So identifying the underlying allergen and resolving that is going to be really important rather than just treating the symptoms because recurrent just treating of symptoms with steroids can actually lead to complications like weight gain, diabetes, and other issues. So getting to the bottom of that allergy is critical in managing this. And then hopefully you'll see this beautiful hair coat return and those spots resolve. And I remember the name, I actually looked it up, the name of the allergist of the clinic in town is the um, Animal Allergy and Eye Clinic in um, Greensboro. So okay. you could follow up with them. Yeah. All right. So if you got allergy issues, that may be one of your stops there. Okay. Yeah. Um, this person says, my dog is very reactive and very large. Is there a way to give her a rabies booster at home? I'm guessing they do not like taking the dog to the vet. Ooh. Um, so rabies can only legally be given by a veterinarian or a registered veterinary technician. So that's not something that um, homeowners can do at home. So there are options for uh, mobile vets. Maybe a mobile vet at home would be a good option for you. Um, if not, then talking with your regular vet about maybe some pre-medication with some uh, medications to help calm them down, like gabapentin or acepromazine. There are different things your regular vet may recommend based on your particular dog and their what other meds they're on, what other health issues they have. But there are plenty of options for meds to help bring that anxiety down and help them be a little bit more relaxed when they go to the vet to get that vaccine. And the rabies vaccine is legally required um, to protect your pet and you if they get bitten by something with an unknown vaccine status. So mm -hmm. it's legally required, but can only be given by a vet or a registered vet tech. So um, call your regular vet and see how they can help you get them into the clinic in a peaceful way. Okay. All right, this person says they have a lab and they're wanting to know if it's okay to feed her fruit like apples in small amounts. Um, a lab and apples? Yes, absolutely. Um, apples are great, bananas, blueberries, strawberries, melon. Um, our dog Josie loves apples and they're a great treat, crunchy and yummy. Right, carrots, that kind of stuff. But the things you never wanna give any dog, raisins and grapes. Right, those are toxic and can cause kidney failure. Mm -hmm. They're non-negotiable, just do not do that. Okay. Non-negotiable, excellent point. All right, this person um, says, um, my cat keeps nibbling on my indoor prayer plant. Is there anything I can do to deter this activity and is it harmful? I'm not sure we know what a prayer, prayer plant is. Prayer plant or pear like the fruit? It says prayer, prayer plant. plant. Yeah, um, I think I would, you can try some of, I don't know if the prayer plant is toxic. I'm not familiar with that plant. Um, if they're nibbling on it and you're not seeing any toxic symptoms, it's probably not toxic. But um, the, I would try a verse of, well, one, move the plant um, and put it in a place where kitty won't chew on it. Two, if that's not possible, trying some aversion behavior, like maybe a squirt bottle. Every time she gets near it, near it just squirt, squirt, because um, you can do that from a distance. You can also, every time she gets near it, shake a, can, a soda can with some coins in it as a loud aversion. Um, you can also try positive reinforcement behavior. Every time she goes near it, call her over, give her a treat, distract her with some play, um, and then hopefully through those things, she will learn to not chew it. But yep. I think moving mm -hmm. it or um, 
trying those things would be best. <laughs> okay. Um, this person says, is there a way to confirm that my dog does indeed have a microchip? This was supposedly mm -hmm. done before I became his owner. And we've got about a minute or so left. Oh yeah, absolutely. Your regular vet should be able to scan it. Um, the, you know, we scan all the time. Every vet clinic has a microchip scanner. So you could take them to your regular vet and just ask them to scan it. Easy peasy. Okay. Can doxycycline help with asthma? Yes. So doxycycline does have some anti-inflammatory properties. So it's an antibiotic. Um, it does help treat any kind of uh, respiratory infection. It also has some immunomodulatory properties and anti-inflammatory properties to the respiratory mucosa. So sometimes cats with asthma, we put them on doxycycline for those reasons as well. Okay, great. Well, thank you for your time and your expertise. We so appreciate it. And if you missed any of this, it's going to be in the two wants to know section of our website.